Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to today's live stream here at the Australian Reptile Park. My name's Hewan and I've got something really special for you today. It's a little bit different, uh, probably the smallest thing that we've had on our live stream so far. Now what I have in this little pouch here are two Joey ringtail possums. Now these are nocturnal animals so they, they might be a bit shy but they'll uh, start to warm up the more that they kind of get uh, comfortable and I'll keep talking about them and we'll, we'll get them out and you guys can have a closer look at them. Now in this pouch I have Remy and Linguini. Now Remy and Linguini are two male uh, ringtail possums, common ringtail possums actually. And uh, basically you find this species all across the east coast of Australia and all over Tasmania as well. Now they're what we call an arboreal marsupial and basically that means that they live in the trees and they're a marsupial like a koala or a wombat or a kangaroo they do have a pouch which i'll talk about their reproduction a little bit later so they're a pretty fascinating animal i'll uh, get remy out here so you can have a bit of a look at him so uh, what you see is what you get with a ringtail possum first thing you're probably noticing are those huge eyes now the eyes are so big like that because they are a highly nocturnal animal so that means they do most of their activity at night now, you'll probably see he's getting around pretty well and he's, he's sort of going back into the pouch there. Um, these guys are, are specifically adapted for life in the trees. Now, they've got really dexterous hands, as you can see here, um, and they've got this huge tail at the minute. And this is where their namesake comes from, the ringtail possum, all right? So they actually use this hail, tail to climb around. It's prehensile, which means they can use it to grab onto trees as they move from branch to branch. The coloration is pretty basic here. Uh, lots of greys and browns on the top side here. Kind of a, a rufousy orange color on the flanks. And then as you come down the tail, um, it transitions to a soft white fur. Uh, a good way of indicating uh, between individuals is how long that little pink strip is there at the base of their tail. Uh, these two are pretty much the same. Um, so uh, it's taken me a while to get to know who's who. Uh, Linguini has a bit of more of a pointy face while Remy's a little bit flatter. Now you can see their little hands there. Um, they're getting around pretty well on the trees and what they're actually eating are anything native. So foliage and vegetation. So that could be banksias, bottle brush, wattle, um, even eucalyptus flowering um, plants and also the gum nuts as well they they love to eat and because they're doing most of their activity at night not many people see them and that's because they're pretty shy um, you've probably seen things like brush tail possums before which are much larger brush tail possums can get to about four kilos when these ones when they're fu fully grown they'll probably be about 60 centimeters from head to tail um, and maybe about 900 grams, so considerably smaller than the brush tail possum. Now, as I mentioned, you find them all across Australia. We actually have six other species of ringtail possums and 19 species of possums in, in total in Australia. So, <laughs> Remy's reaching out for the camera there. Uh, so they are pretty, pretty widespread. And depending on where you find them, um, you'll have different colorations and different features and things like that. My favorite possum is actually the striped possum, which you find in the Cape York region uh, in northern Queensland. Beautiful black and white colors. Uh, uh, definitely have a Google and have a look at um, the, uh, the striped possum. Amazing animal. But these ones are pretty amazing too. Now, um, as I mentioned, in the wild, they're eating vegetation and eucalypt and things like that. These possums are actually hand raised. So at the minute, I'm taking them home and I'm feeding them milk. So it's a specially designed product. Uh, it comes in a powder form and you mix it with milk, uh, sorry, water. And um, they're on about three feeds a day. They're drinking about 14 mils of milk. And right now, they're about four months old. So they're actually starting to wean off the milk now and, and they're eating solid food. And I do have a flower over here, which I will grab and we'll see if Remy wants to have a go. As I mentioned, they are nocturnal. So whether or not he's uh, too keen on having a nibble here, we'll wait and see. See how he goes? No, so they do most of their activity at night, even in the little playpen that they've got at home. And that's where they will do most of their eating. So usually I feed them overnight, about three feeds of milk a day. And then at night time, I'll give them lots of uh, greens and veggies and things like that. They love fruit, but it's not particularly good for them. So uh, very, very small amounts of fruit, maybe once or twice a week uh, for the ringtail possum. Now, their reproduction is pretty interesting. Females can actually breed uh, all year round, basically from uh, April to November, and they can have about one or two uh, litters per year. 
Now, because they're a marsupial, once uh, the female actually becomes pregnant, the gestation period is about 14 to 16 days, so around two weeks. So it's actually quite small, um, small of a gestation period because they're marsupials and they give birth to very undeveloped live young. So basically these things are born and they don't have any eyes or ears or, or they're like this little tiny pink jelly bean. And they've got these tiny little limbs which they'll use to climb from the birth opening and into the pouch where they'll attach to mum's teat uh, and that's where they do most of their development. They'll spend the first four months of their life in mum's pouch, in which stage they'll permanently exit the pouch. And that means they'll spend most of their time on mum's back. And by the time they're about five, six months old, they're fully independent and fully grown at around 12 months and sexually mature as well. And they live for about five or six years, both in the wild and in captivity. Now, because they're nocturnal, they're sleeping during the day. And people often wonder, where do they sleep? Usually it's uh, hollows in trees, but it's quite interesting, these species, they actually collect sticks and leaves and a whole bunch of like bark and things, and they actually make these spherical drays in trees, and they'll just hang there, and they stand out pretty well when you actually know what you're looking for, and um, if they don't have a hollow log, they'll make one of these drays, and that's where they'll uh, sleep during the day, and they'll come out at night time. And they actually can be highly social. So they can form little sibling groups or family groups uh, and they can rummage around at night time and that's where they do most of their activity. Now, uh, they do have uh, a couple of threats in the wild. Uh, they have a couple of natural predators like owls and uh, dingoes or maybe other predatory birds and things like that. And they also have some introduced predators like the fox and the cat. Now. Our native wildlife are absolutely decimated by uh, feral fox and cat because uh, our natives, they actually don't know how to combat uh, to get away from those, those species because they haven't evolved with them. So they actually are quite devastating uh, to our native wildlife. And we might pop Remy in on the tree over here and see him climb. Come on, mate. They get a bit clingy. Up you go. There we go. So while uh, Remy's having a bit of a climb there, I'll get Linguini out. And that vocalisation there is just him talking uh, to me and, and to his little brother down here as well. Uh, so yeah, the, the fox and the cat, really, really bad for these, for these types of animals. Our small natives just don't know how to cope with those types of predators. Uh, deforestation is also another threat to them. Um, obviously they live in the trees so if they don't have those trees to live in uh, they don't have anywhere to live at all so um, it takes hundreds if not thousands of years for all those hollows in the trees to develop naturally um, so if we're uh, butchering all the forests we don't have enough time for those those hollows to develop so there are a, a couple of ways which you can help this species and and the most uh, probably obvious one is to hang some nest boxes in your backyard so if you would like to facilitate some homes for um, not a, not just mammals like this but uh, little birds and, and 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 things like that then um, definitely hang some nest boxes um, and 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 provide some homes for this very very lovely species here so as you can see, they're, they're, they're really clingy at the minute. So they're quite friendly because they are hand raised. Um, they'll probably start staying here at the reptile park in the next couple of months or so. Uh, once we're happy and they're fully weaned off the milk and things like that. And you can see them here using their tail, wrapping it around the perch, getting around uh, really, really easily. Um, and like I said, specifically uh, designed to uh, having life in trees. How many different species? Um, possum species are there in Australia? So there's about 19 species of possums in total. Now, um, depending on where you go in Australia, um, you, you'll see different ones. And probably the most common one you're going to bump into is the brush tail possum. Now, like I said before, the brush tail possum is about four kilos. So it's a pretty big animal and it's nearly a metre in length from head to tail. And the main difference between them is that they're bigger. And as the name suggests, the brush tail possum, it has a huge bushy tail. It's not uh, long and slender like this one. Uh, it almost looks like a feather duster. Uh, and those ones are the ones that you probably hear rattling around in your roof and they're really, really confident and uh, boisterous when they are uh, sort of in an area like campsites and things like that. Uh, don't go picking up brush tail possums um, because they do get fed quite often at campsites and they can be aggressive when you, uh, when you back them into a corner or, or try and pick them up or anything like that. 
They look really soft. Can you tell us what they feel like? Yeah, so right now, uh, these two are very, very soft. They almost feel like velvet. And as they get a little bit older and they're more exposed to the elements like the wind and rain and outside, uh, the fur will become a little bit softer. Now, it probably won't, uh, sorry, more coarse, I should say, uh, and it won't, won't get too much different from what it is now. Um, the people watching at home, are they likely to see these guys in their backyard or? Yeah, of course. Uh, as I said, as I said uh, they are a common ringtail possum. So um, you find them basically all across the east coast of Australia and in Tasmania. Um, if you're looking for them at night time, um, you can use a torch and you'll often get eye shine. So you'll see a reflection from those huge big eyes um, coming from your torch. And they're pretty easy to see once you sort of get your eye in and you know what you're looking for. Um, and as well as the brush tail possums being quite friendly, these ones can as well. Um, people probably have these at, uh, at home in their backyard and they're also really friendly and um, people are feeding them, which is, which is fine to do just as long as you're not giving them those high sugar uh, foods or anything like bread or, or anything like that. But any veggies are, are, are really good for them. Um, these two love uh, cucumber, cauliflower. Uh, they love corn as well. I've got a little bit of food here for them. Yeah, let's, let's try them on the, the veggies that we've got here. They weren't interested in the flower, but they might like their veggies. So you might be able to see them okay. use their, their hands here. And they're just having a little bit of a sniff, but they're in a new environment at the minute. So they're probably not going to be too keen on having a feed. Oh, that's all right. Oh, here we go. What's their um, sense of smell like, Ewan? Um, so they'll uh, rummage around in the trees um, and they'll use their nose to get around, but their eyesight's what, what, what makes them sort of really uh, um, adapted to, to nighttime life. Uh, and not many people know, but um, they're actually one of the few species that will actually eat eucalyptus as well. So often people think that it's just koalas that eat eucalyptus. But your uh, little possums like this uh, and, and other species as well, uh, they'll eat eucalyptus, not as much as a koala will, uh, but they are pretty, um, pretty good at, at eating uke. So, yeah. Um, so, uh, thanks for listening, guys. That's probably about it for me today. Um, I uh, hope everyone's doing well at home. Uh, if you would like to support us, just visit us at thereptilepark.com.au uh, just to see a few ways in which you can help us out during lockdown. I hope everyone's staying safe. Um, Make sure you're tuning in for our live streams tomorrow. I think Keeper Jake's feeding uh, Elvis, who's our large saltwater crocodile. So tune in then, guys. But I appreciate you tuning in today. Thank you very much. Have a good one. See you later, guys.